it's Heather with Mary's Home for Wayward Chickens. And I don't know about you guys, but when I start doing things, my mind wanders. And so I was cleaning out the chicken room this morning, and I noticed that their water was getting a little dirty. So I was washing the bowl, and my head started turning where a couple times I've told TJ, the chickens have dirty water. Don't have them have dirty water. And I know they drink from puddles and mud and crap, but I just... It, he, he didn't think, oh, it's not a big deal if it's a little bit dirty. And I'm like, okay, great. So I'll put that in your drinking water and see if, how you like it. So it reminded me of the story about how we actually decided to be a chicken rescue. And I'm not sure if the rules and the codes are different everywhere, but they're probably similar. Um, when people ask me why there's a chicken rescue or if they didn't know that there was such a thing as a chicken rescue, I usually just respond and say any animal that has anything to do with people needs a rescue. So the laws, at least by us, um, don't really protect chickens. They're not considered domestic uh, animals, obviously. And even if they're like, like just egg-laying chickens or egg-laying hens, um, they're still considered a meat bird. So the guidelines for their care are bare minimum. The only requirement that you need to give chickens, at least in our area, is some sort of shelter. It's not guided by any specific uh, specifications, um, any sort of shelter, and uh, a food and water source. That's it. So when we were going to go get some hens a few years ago, I think it was three, we're going on three or four years now. And so we found this local guy who some 15 minutes away, and he had chickens for sale. And when we got there, it was, it was like an, it was like a bad country song, like the two-year-old running around in a diaper, dirty in the sun, the dog chained up outside with a with a water bowl that was probably hot, the truck up on cinder blocks. I'm like, where the hell are we? And so, when we saw his run, he had two run, he had one run, and then he had what was more like um a, a large, like a like a hutch. There were so many chickens in there that it was, it was just, I had no words for it. And I noticed one of the chickens was like walking into the fence. And I'm like, look at that one, TJ. I think that one's special. I'm like, we gotta get that one because no one else is gonna want them. I mean, I knew nothing about chickens at the time, but I knew that like people buy them for a reason. And if one of them was walking into walls, he's not gonna really stand a chance. And that's where we got Einstein from. So. We discovered that his older hens, he had a turkey. I mean, when I say he had a tom, a tom turkey, huge, huge, in with the chickens. And his water source was a kiddie pool, which sounds fine, except the kiddie pool is as deep, and that's how deep the water was. You couldn't see the bottom. It was the darkest green, the darkest, darkest green. It was like black green because it was all algae and sludge that was their only water source and I just I I had to stop from crying on the spot and just like throat punching this guy uh, a couple of his hens were really badly picked on and I, I said to him I'm like oh that one looks like it's getting picked on he's oh yeah yeah you know they just have a little scuffles I mean she had their feathers were plucked off the back of her head and she had like no tail feathers she had bare like uh, the, the cuticle that holds the feathers that's where we got Bamboo. Her name was Bamboo because her tail looked like bamboo skewers. We got One-Eyed Wilma because one of them was walking around with her head all the way to the ground to see. She had like an infection in one eye and her eye was open and she, had to, she was permanently with her neck like this. We got Two Tone Malone, Einstein. Um, we got a bunch of hens from him and then all of a sudden we find out that inside the coop is one lonely chick, a couple of weeks old, not even fully feathered, on a, on, by itself on a shelf. And I'm like, all right, so we're going to buy all the chickens. I said, TJ, we're not leaving here without these chickens. And it happened. And uh, he's like, oh, well, those are my laying, those are my egg laying hens. You know, they're not for sale. I looked at this guy and I said, everything is for sale. And so we wound up buying his entire hen flock. I think it was eight full size hens and like six babies. We went there for like four or five chickens. And he's like, well, you know what? If you're going to buy all those, you may as well. This is when we found the baby. You may as well take this one. This one's by itself. It could probably use a little friend and hands me this little chick. 
I'm like, where, what? That's who we got cashmere. We, we named that one cashmere. I was so beside myself that I cried the whole way. I had to hold it together in front of this guy because I didn't want him to know I was recording him. I took pictures when he was walking around. I, I took pictures of everything. It was just, I, I have no words. And so when we got Bamboo home, we had discovered chickens hide things. Her, she had uh, wing feathers. But when you separated her wings, this chicken was plucked clean. She had nary a feather from the back of her neck all the way to her tail where the skewers, the bamboo was sticking out. I, I just, one-eyed Wilma wound up being able, we corrected her eye infection. She could see. Um, she wound up being able to fix her head a little so she only had to walk around like this because it was just like that for like two years. She wasn't all the way down to the ground anymore. But she always had like a little permanent uh, neck bend, but she was so much better. Kashmir grew up, became a mom. I took pictures of everything when the guy wasn't looking, and that's when I found out that our guidelines are basic food, water, and shelter. When I sent these photos that I had in an email to the county, or I, I went to the county and the ASPCA, it was my understanding that they were disgusted by what they saw. They did go out and investigate. Apparently they shut them down, but you don't need a license or anything to breed chickens. I'm pretty sure TJ saw him a couple months later up and running again on Facebook selling chickens, but that's how we got started. I told him, we, I, when I cried the whole way home, we had to have a serious discussion where like, I get really emotional about chickens. I can give a fuck about people. I have like a handful. Children, handicapped, seniors, vets, and animals. Anything that is that cannot defend itself, I have I have empathy for, um, and we decided. TJ's like Heather, you can't handle this. You know, we're gonna get we're gonna get bad chickens, and we may not be able to save them. And I told him that if we could if we could at least try to save them, if it was for a week, or a month, or a year, that at least the tail end of whatever life they have would be better than where they came from, and they would know that they were loved, and that their last memories would be of, of a person trying to help them and not just profit off of sludge and algae water. So that is where Murray's home from Wayward Chickens came from and how we started. And I know that I made a video about this a long time ago when we first started, but with how many videos we have up, I figured it's, who's going to scroll through all that stuff. So I just, my head was spinning when I was cleaning the water dish this morning and it brought me back to how we got started and, and what made me want to rescue chickens. And so I just thought maybe you guys might want to hear that and maybe share it. If you have questions or comments, please always feel free to leave them. And uh, we would love if you'd hit like or subscribe. Have a great day.